Hi, in this video we'll see how to find set of efficient allocations in an economy in which individual one's utility is u1 equals x1 plus y1, individual two's utility function is u2 equals minimum x2 y2, and individual one has four units of x, individual two has six units of x, Individual 1 has 8 units of y and individual 2 has 4 units of y. So the total amount of x in the economy is 4 plus 6 which is 10 units and total amount of y in this economy is 8 plus 4 which is 12 units. Now let's find the set of all efficient allocations in this economy. We'll begin by plotting the Edgeworth box. These are the axis of individual 1. These are the axis of individual 2. Let's plot a couple of ICs, one for individual 1 and the other for individual 2. This is the indifference curve of individual 1 because its utility function is x1 plus y1. This is an indifference curve for individual 2 because the individual 2's utility function is minimum x2, y2. Now given the way the entire Edgeworth box looks and given the way the preferences are, we are going to divide this problem into three regions. One is a region above the 45 degree line, one is region below the 45 degree line and one, one is points on the 45 degree line through the origin of individual 2. So we are going to pick a point randomly from the region above the 45 degree line, let's say alpha and we would like to inspect whether this point is efficient or not. So first we'll plot the indifference curve of individual 1 through this point and this is how it's going to look. All the allocations that lie above this indifference curve are strictly preferred by individual 1 to alpha. Now let us plot the indifference curve of individual 2 through alpha. This is how it's going to look. These are the points which are strictly preferred by individual 2 in comparison to alpha. So clearly there is a region here if we move in this direction anywhere in this triangle will be necessarily improving the welfare of one without reducing the welfare of the other. So let us consider a movement to a point such as beta. Now if you are going to move to beta from alpha we are improving the satisfaction level of individual 1 and we are keeping the level of satisfaction of 2 the same as before. So clearly this is an improvement. So alpha is not an efficient point because beta leads to increase in the satisfaction level of 1 without reducing the satisfaction level of 2. This kind of reasoning can help us eliminate any point lying above the 45 degree line and we can clearly say that none of these points are efficient. The reasoning is exactly the same for points lying below the 45 degree line. So none of the points lying above this line and below this line is efficient. Now we are going to quickly check whether the points lying on the 45 degree line are efficient or not. So consider a point such as beta. If you want to plot the indifference curve of individual 1 through this point, this is how it's going to look. This is a region where 1 can be made better off. Now let's plot the indifference curve of individual 2 through the beta. The set of points where individual 2 can be made better off is shaded blue here. Now if we want to make individual 1 strictly better off, we'll have to move in this region. But if we'll move in this region, we'll end up making 2 worse off. And if we want to make 2 better off, we'll have to move in this region. But if we move in this region, we'll end up making 1 worse off. So there is no way that we can improve the satisfaction level of 1 without reducing the satisfaction level of the other. So that means beta is efficient. And not only beta, this is the reasoning which is going to hold good for any point lying on this 45 degree line. So all the points lying on this line are Pareto efficient. So we can conclude that the set of efficient allocations are all those points lying in the Edgeworth box 
that satisfy the property that x2 equals y2. This is this brown line here. Thank you.